I'm back, everybody! Hello! Look, I changed it to be all pretty for... Holy smokes, that text is big. I changed it all to be all pretty and colorful for Hawaii. <laughs> Let me fix that chat box for a second. Good lord. Uh... Like that? Did that fix it? Everyone spam chat so I can see what it looks like. Oh, okay, that's perfect. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm back. How are you all doing? <laughs> oh, my lord. We have so much cool stuff. I have so much cool stuff to show you guys. But how's everybody doing, first of all? How are you all doing? It's been two... Three weeks. Four, three weeks. It's been three weeks. Because I remember I had to take two weeks off. Because I had to prepare for Hawaii and then actually be in Hawaii. And then the week I came back, I was just way too tired. And I'm like, guys, I can't stream this Wednesday. So <laughs> I had to take another week off. And now here we are. Wednesday number four. We're finally here, and I can talk about all the cool stuff. I don't want to talk about the bad stuff, though. Like, school. That stuff sucks right now. Like I said, I was stressed, and I had to skip that week, so I could do school stuff or whatever. But, here we are. I made it. And I got to make everything all colorful for you. I got... I forgot what they're called. Uh, Those flowers. There's a name for them. It's like hibiscus or something. H is it hibiscus? It is hibiscus. Yeah, hibiscus flowers. Got hibiscus flowers all over our screen. Everything's all tropical. There's a beach. Everything's all pretty. As you can see, for the donation section where we usually have that Hayagadora meter, that was fulfilled. And I'm going to start working on that review for Hayagadora. I'm not going to make another goal until that's finished. Because I don't want to have a bunch of goals being met and I haven't even like met number one yet. Donations are still available. Just use that pinned link in the chat. But there's no goals yet. I want to make sure I get this Ghidorah one done for you guys first. Because I want to just get that out of the way first. I don't want to go, okay, let's work for five more things. I even got number one done exactly. Um, I have a commission that I haven't worked on since like Christmas. And that's kind of scummy. I'd really like to just get that done for that person. They've waited long enough. I'll have to try to get time to get that commission done. But, yeah. I like to keep things on pause until I finish the first thing. So, as you can see, Hayagadora is going to be a review in process. I even changed the music today, too. To be all... Tropical. I don't think it's too loud. I remembered this time. I remember last stream I forgot. I'm supposed to turn the music down just a little bit because the default volume is usually too loud. And I believe it's good. Let me check. Uh, I could turn it down a little bit more. Mm, that should be good. You need to hear the music, but you don't need to hear too clearly. Because then you can't hear me. I need to be the overpowering audio. <laughs> but yeah, I just figured that for this stream, um, I could just talk about my Hawaii trip, and then anyone could bring up literally anything in the chat, and we can just talk about it. Like how GXK is out now. That's being played in theaters, we can talk about that. To an extent... I don't want to spoil things for people, so we can only talk about it to an extent. But yeah, we can talk about stuff like that. There are a ton of highlights that we can talk about too. For example, Godzilla Save the Earth Melee. We got our next presentation out, and I got to work on a big chunk of it. So, that was dope. Expect a behind-the-scenes video eventually for the parts that I worked on. Um... Again, like I said, I have a commission to work on that's very overdue. 
um i still have like college stuff to do or whatever but i'm really excited to do my behind the scenes video because that stuff's really fun um we revealed godzilla 2000 and orga and good lord <laughs> we did so good we all did so good it is the coolest thing ever <laughs> but yeah so okay why don't i just start off with this i just put them in an order that i think would work these are just a few of the images i got of just like scenery lord knows i don't remember the names of any of these mountains um i forgot which one it was i think it was so i was there with my family i have relatives in hawaii that live there and i got to spend the week with them but um and then my mom, she flies around all the place for, like, business or whatever. And by sheer coincidence, my mom, the Hawaiian lady, gets to constantly fly over to Hawaii for business reasons. And it's like, oh, well, that's perfect. And during my break in Hawaii, she was like, hey, I'm going to be flying to Hawaii. Maybe we can start doing stuff later, too. Which was awesome. Which means I got to be the, in Hawaii with my mom. And I forgot what the name of the mountain was. But according to Hawaiian mythology, it was like the literal crotch of a female goddess. Yeah, guys, I'm not making this shit up. It's it's cool if you don't look at it in the view of a modern day person. But you are a modern day person. So you hear this and you're like, what the hell were they on? The mountain itself was like her... her mouth down south that's what the mountain was and the mountain would literally come off of the ground and fly around <laughs> and it would lure other gods to her the, the floating hetera eye let's call it the hetera eye <laughs> her floating hetera eye would approach other gods and be like come over here i know you want it <laughs> and then it would bring them back to her where i think she'd kill him or something like that i can't remember but i was too busy laughing to remember the whole thing i was like what the fuck are you talking about there's no way that's real <laughs> she's like hey that, that, that's what it says so i think most of these mountain shots were when i was on my way to hanauma bay this had to have been Hanauma Bay, because the next pictures absolutely are. But these were just some cool sceneries in Hawaii, things that I never get where I live. I am in Minnesota, which is the flattest place on earth. <laughs> this is really do this too. <laughs> I. It's so weird. I love mythology, especially Hawaiian mythology, but I love just going, how did they come to that conclusion? <laughs> like, how did they come to the conclusion that that's what that mountain was? They're like, oh, that, you know what? Yeah, that that's what it is. It's hetero's eye. That's a lady's hetero eye. <laughs> that makes sense, yeah. I think this is just a cool mountainside. Yeah, here's Hanauma Bay. So this is another one I remember. So I actually go, I'll explain Hanauma Bay later. But this specific rock formation, my mom told me, she told me that a while ago, like prior to some of the erosion and stuff it has now, it vaguely looked a lot like an animal. It looked like, I mean, it kind of does still. They said it looked like a lizard, kind of like a giant rock lizard that was just laying down. And apparently her sister, so my aunt, was writing a story about, about that. Where it's like a giant lizard that eventually like rested or whatever and it became the mountain formation. I was like, oh, no way, that's cool. And then I immediately went, wow, if I tell literally anyone this, they're just going to go Methuselah, 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 Methuselah. <laughs> I thought it was really cool, though. I That's one of my favorite parts about 
Hawaiian mythology and mountains. When they aren't going like, oh, this is Hedera's eye. <laughs> Usually their explanations for the creations of the mountains are awesome. Like, you guys have seen Moana, right? You have to have. It's one of the biggest movies ever. Um, how Tafiti, how she lays down at the end of the movie and becomes the mountain formation. That's an actual volcano. There's an actual, I, I don't know if it's called the Sleeping Lady or whatever, but it's a mountain formation in the ocean that is shaped almost exactly like that. It's shaped like a lady laying down and sleeping. And then Polynesians look at that and go, oh shit, that's a goddess. That, that went to sleep. And I'm like, okay, that's the coolest shit ever. That's raw. <laughs> yeah, Moana's getting a lot, why? I, okay, I know why, but why so soon? <laughs> Moana was probably one of my favorite recent Disney movies. It has to have been. A lot of Disney movies I haven't been a big fan of recently, but Moana was one of the ones I really did like. They're getting a Moana 2, which was apparently a Disney Plus show that they just turned into a movie. So it's probably not going to be that good. And then they're making a live action Moana, which is like, that's kind of soon. Don't you think, Disney? <laughs> a little soon. But anyways, <laughs> now that we're done talking about the mountain, first of all, I can burp, excuse me. And second of all, we can talk about the bay itself now. So this is easily the coolest thing I did during my entire Hawaii trip. Hanauma Bay. It is a protected landmark. It's protected, but at the same time, you can still go there. So before you go down there, you have to go through a bunch of security. You watch like a whole presentation video about the history of the bay. And going through all the rules and regulations like do not do this do not do that don't make any physical contact with any of the rock or coral or anything do not touch any animals you might see do not pretty much don't mess with the ecosystem at all in any way you can't you can only wear specific sunscreens that are safe for the environment you can only do this and that watch your garbage because there's mongoose there's mongooses all over the shoreline that will steal your shit which i saw there were mongooses <laughs> like everywhere which is cool because if you're a pokemon fan and you played sun and moon the people that made sun and moon absolutely did their homework the main rodent of the alola region is a mongoose and there are mongoose fucking everywhere in Hawaii. They were everywhere. Especially here in Hanauma Bay. There were just mongoose everywhere. I turn around. I look away for like eight seconds and then turn around and there's like five mongoose by the trash can. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. But um Yes, yeah, so this is a protected reef. Oh well, shoreline. And the whole like tourist part of this is that they say there are fish everywhere, and they will be right in your face. And I looked at that, and I was like, okay, that, that's probably kind of bullshit, right? That's probably just to get tourists and like, oh, there's going to be fish everywhere. Like, everywhere, like a Disney movie. What? And I'm like, no, there, there's no way. I might, like, see a few fish from, like, a distance, right? Um. Oh, here's another shot. Yeah, now this is all free sand, and this is all just coral. Unfortunately... The world sucks now, and coral dies, so everything just looks all gray and white and dead. But trust me, it's still alive. Um, but yeah, like I said, um, they said there will be fish everywhere, and like, I was like, I call cap, that's bullshit. Like, look at this picture, you don't see anything, you just see a bunch of people. But good lord... I, we, we got some stuff prior to coming here. Um, we went to a Target, and I got this thing. It's like, put my phone in, like, a waterproof case so I could, like, record stuff underwater. And, again, I wasn't expecting much. 
but oh my god, literally within like one minute of going in the water. The, they were everywhere! The fish were everywhere! <laughs> right in front of me! This is all recorded on my phone. A giant ass parent fish. Just huge parrot fish right past my face. Whoa, holy shit! I I was in absolute disbelief. There were just fish everywhere. It's a quarter to eight. There's fish everywhere. There's fish everywhere. <laughs> like, oh my lord. It was the coolest thing ever. I have like tons of these videos, but I only picked like a few. Because, like, I didn't think ahead of time and go, oh, I should probably put all these on my computer so I can show them on stream. But I just grabbed the most important ones. But, oh my god, there were fish everywhere. There's, there's fish everywhere. Look, this guy just swam right up to my face and I was like, hey, what's up? I saw so much stuff down here, and they are right in front of me. They are everywhere. This was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> I think I took a breath there. Either that or I was trying to maneuver around the coral, which was so fucking hard because I was deathly afraid of even laying a single finger on the coral because they're like, do not touch the coral. <laughs> so I was like, I don't want to touch the coral. So there goes that. I think this is the end of this clip. I have three clips of me underwater. That's that one. This is another one. I think this is when I see a red parrot fish. No, this is when I see, well, maybe. Yeah, there it is. This is when I saw these really weird fucking things. So they're like these really long, like needle looking fish. And there were a lot of them. It was like a school of them. But they were almost like clear at the same time or like super reflective. Like you could not see them. They were like that thing from Transformers 2. Or like if you look at it head on, it's just invisible. Or like if their body's at like the right angle, then the light reflects off their body and they just blend in completely with the water. But when they're on the surface, you can like kind of see them. And there were a ton of them. And I was like, whoa, that's the coolest thing ever. And they're in this. Yeah, these things. Oh my God, they were so weird. They just sit at the top and they're like pencils. And they just disappear into the water instantly. Because, look, they're gone now. I know they're right there in front of me, but I can't see them anymore. Yeah, look, there's a, there's the eyeballs. But <laughs> that was so, now they're there. They weren't there a second ago. I was, I was tripping when I saw these fish. And then they started like going around me in circles. Oh my god, they were so cool. <laughs> I can't remember what they're called. They're... Pipe fish, maybe? I don't know. I know they weren't needlefish, because I know what a needlefish is. They could have been like pipe fish or something. Yeah, they were all around me. And then they cause a tornado for 426 damage. I wonder what they do taste like. <laughs> they taste like water. Weird fish. <laughs> Look, and they're gone. Oh, oh, there they are. They are so... That's so cool. Uh, I think they blend in with the surface of the water. Because like how everything is all darker gray and blue on the surface. They blend in with that. There's a parrot fish. A smaller one, though. I swear to God, there were fish literally everywhere. Oh, it shitted. Oh yeah, just to know, this playlist is only an hour long. So... <laughs> I just have this on loop, so we're just going to hear the same stuff, like, twice. <laughs> I was trying so hard to find, like, a playlist of copyright-free Hawaiian music, and I just couldn't find anything. 
I found a ton of stuff. It just, it had royalties. So I was like, man, that stinks. Or there was one I found where it was like, hey, you can use this one, but you gotta first email the person and tell them the commercial you use. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't wanna do that. So I found out that Lo-Fi Girl just has a summertime video that's one hour long. I'm like, okay, I'll just loop this twice, I guess. Because I already have permission from Lo-Fi Girl to play their music, so I might as well just stick to that. I'm like, okay, this works. Okay, one more. This is the shortest one, but it's easily the coolest one. Um, I was unironically hoping I saw a shark. I wanted to see, like, a black tip reef shark or something when I went swimming. I know everyone's like, oh, no, a shark. I want to see one. Like, I, I don't care. I'm not scared. Especially if it's like a tiger shark, then yeah, maybe I'll be scared. Like those things are huge. But just something simple, like a black tip or a white tip. I would love that. Unfortunately, I didn't get that. However, I did see a predator. I saw a really cool predator. A peppered moray eel swam right underneath me. I just looked down. I didn't even know it was there. I was just cruising, and I looked down, giant eel right underneath me. Holy shit! And I pulled out my phone, and I just watched it swim off. I couldn't catch up with it. I also couldn't get past the coral either. But that was the coolest one. That was the, that was the coolest shit ever. I Well, a, be seeing a shark would have been the coolest shit ever. But this was a really good consolation prize. There was a pet. Hold on, let me freeze frame. So yeah, as you can see, like I'm frantically trying to like get my phone out. So I couldn't just press record on my phone or whatever. It wouldn't work underwater. I'd have to lift the phone above the water and let all the water get off the case. And then it would sense my thumb through the plastic screen. So I saw the eel. So I was just swimming, and I looked down, and I saw the eel. Holy shit! Then I had to quickly lift my hand out of the water, and then wait for my thumb to start to respond on the phone, then get the camera, then go record, and then this is me, like, frantically getting it back into the water, and going, shit, where's the eel? Where's the eel? It's still, like, kind of underneath me, but it's swimming off. And there it is, just huge fucking eel going right past me. I thought it was going to bite me when it was underneath me. I was like, this thing could totally just rip a chunk out of my stomach right now if it wanted to. But it didn't. It was just like, hey, what's up? And just, wow, wow, water snake. <laughs> then a big fish swims by. I think that's a trevally. I think that's a trevally. I could be wrong because I don't remember trevallies being blue and yellow. But that giant eel was the coolest thing ever. Actually, I, there's another thing that happened. I didn't get to record this, but it is an easy contender for the coolest thing that I did here. So prior to coming to this place, to Hanauma Bay, my mom took me to a different beach. Ala Moana Beach Park. It's just a, it's a beach. It's not a special quote-unquote special as Hanama Bay. There's no, like, super crazy rules or whatever. Like, oh, you gotta do all this stuff. You can just go there and go in the water whenever you want. Um, ooh. Ah, my nose is stuffy. Um, my mom swam me out to the reef, like, where the coral was, and she was like, okay, cool. Here's the whatever. You have some goggles. See if you can find anything. I saw some, like, minnows and like a really, really, really tiny crab. And I was like, mom, okay, I don't think I'm finding anything. Then she goes, oh shit. <laughs> and I'm like, what? That's a sea turtle over there. I'm like, what? I turn around. Like, I wanna say 20 feet away from us. I just see a big hump on the surface of the water and then the head of a turtle in front of it. Just pop out of the water and it was just breathing it was just going like just like grabbing a catch of air and i was like no fucking way 
and I just kept looking at my mom like, can I go over to it? Like, I, I can't, I know I can't touch it, but like, how, how close can I get? And she's just like, they say arm's length away. So I could get as close to that turtle as I wanted as long as I was an arm's length away. Just some random ass wild sea turtle. And that's exactly what I did. And it wasn't doing anything. It wasn't like eating. It wasn't doing anything. It was just sitting on top of the water, just popping its head out and like breathing every once in a while, just like and dipping its head back under. And then its head comes back up. And I just swam over to it. <laughs> I got within like four feet of that thing. This big fucking green sea turtle. And it was just chilling. It didn't mind me being there. I was like, hey, what's up? <laughs> It was just chilling. And then it did eventually go away. It didn't swim off. It swam down. It went into the water. And, like, I kind of followed it for a bit. Like, I put on my goggles and I went underwater and I saw it swimming away. But it got to the murky part of the water where I just couldn't follow it anymore. I was like, Mom, follow me! And, like, we tried to look for it. And, like, I, I can't find it. That thing's gone. <laughs> But that was still amazing. And this was before we got the phone case or whatever, so I couldn't record that. But, wow. That mixed with the eel. Like, I may not have seen a shark. A wild shark. But that, those were both still crazy experiences. Right? Like, I don't know if I can complain anymore after having those two things happen. Those don't just happen every day. Like, uh, uh. What's next? I think it's... Oh, that's right. I forgot what this place is called. It was a essentially an aquarium. Hold on. I'm thirsty. Whew. We went to a water animal place. Because even though I didn't get to see sharks in the wild, my mom was like, okay, well, we can at least show you sharks here. And I really wanted to see a hammerhead shark because my youngest sister went to this same place like years ago. That she got to go to Hawaii before me. And they had recordings of them going to this exact same place and they had hammerheads. And I was like, you fucker. <laughs> you don't get to see hammerheads before me. That's not fair. So we finally showed up to this place. And well, okay, I don't want to talk about the sharks yet because there's pictures of turtles here. There were a bunch of turtles in this like big pond. And you could buy like turtle food, like kale and broccoli, you know, stuff that grows in the ocean. And then you could throw that stuff into the water and all the turtles would immediately just come to the edge and they'd like stack on top of each other like pancakes trying to see who could get more food. I really wanted to see hammerheads. It, there were no hammerheads, which sucked. I was really looking forward to seeing a hammerhead shark and I have still never officially seen a real hammerhead shark with my bare eyes. But, yeah. What I did get to see was still pretty cool, though. I think it's next. No, it's not next. Oh, that's right. Sharks are the last one that we're going to look at. For the water park, at least. We stayed at the water park for quite a while. And they had a bunch of scheduled events. Like, oh, at whatever o'clock, we're going to go over to the sea lions. And we're going to do our daily routine with them. And this was funny. So they did all the cool stuff, like they talk about the sea lions, they're like, oh, sea lions can eat whatever a day, and stuff like that. I'm like, this one's name is Chancho. Chancho had the most depressing life you could ever think of, and we named him Chancho. <laughs> Both of his parents were killed in front of him, he had to eat sand for two years. He got mauled by a shark and he survived. And we found him and his name is Chancho. <laughs> That's what it's always like at zoos and aquariums. It's like, hello, so this is Manfree. 
Um, he lost his entire lower half as a baby. That's like, <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> but anyways, they're doing all that stuff. They're like, okay, this is the sea lions. And look, they can do this and that. They're, they're this old. They're male, female. And then that person's just talking. Then the actual trainers are making him go like, oh, do rolls. Uh, show me like how to nod and like smack your belly and all that. And <laughs> imagine living your your worst, most depressing life just to be named Cornelius the Third. <laughs> That's what it's always like. It's like they have the most traumatic life an animal could ever experience, and then they're named like Wackadoodle. <laughs> but um. Yeah, so then it got to the part where they were teaching, where they were trying to get them to speak, because something that actually never clicked with me, that my mom told me, that made me go, oh, that makes sense. She was like, do you know why they make the animals do this shit? Like, do you know why they're making them, like, speak and, like, swim around and move their flippers around? And I'm like, no, why? And she's like, that's their medical checkup. Every time they do this, they record the information. They're like, okay, he can swim around. He can still swim around well or whatever. It's like, oh, he's waving high to the audience. Okay, he still has good control over his flippers. Stuff like that. Or like, I didn't know that. And I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. So when it got to this sea lion, they were trying to get him to speak. And apparently he was marooned way too early or something and for some reason he couldn't bark it, it was like you know the or 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 noise that seals and sea lions make he couldn't do it for some reason and every time she was like speak speak instead of going like ar, 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 he'd just go ar, ar, ar. <laughs> it was the funniest shit ever like watch like he'd try you could tell he was trying it's like i don't get it <laughs> and like he'd try and he'd be like ur, ur, and then he'd just give up and go <laughs> she tries to make him do it again <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. The trainer was like, speak. It was like, Argh. and she's like, kinda. <laughs> He's trying his best. How loud is this? Is this right? Let me check. I don't, I want, I just need to make sure it's not like blaring. Argh. Okay, it's perfect. But he couldn't do it. <laughs> and this went on. So this is only like a small chunk of this. This is a very small chunk of this. This sea lion was doing this for at least 20 minutes. Like, even after the whole show, like, okay, guys, we're done, bye, and all the trainers left, and, like, the one lady, like, walked out, he still kept doing it. He just followed her from the outside of the exhibit, just like, no, wait, I can do it. Trust me, please, just give me one more chance, one more chance, please. I promise you I can do it this time, please, just, just one more chance, please. And he actually did it. He was like, ar, ar, and she was like, whoa, no way, and then she ran back in. It's like, wait, wait, do it again. And then he just goes, <laughs> He was trying so hard. <laughs> and then, like, she'd go over and just talk to, like, the managers or whatever. It's like, yeah, the seal's, like, fucking whatever. And he's just uh, constantly interrupting her, just going, <laughs> This is the funniest shit. I was trying so hard not to laugh. <laughs> Speak! Speak. 
I hope I hope he knows how to bark though. That would be awesome if he learned it by now. Like from maybe listening to the other seals. So, because one of the sea lions, I think he was the the dominant male, because he was the big one with like the really puffy chested neck and like the mane. And that the handler for him like brought him into like a different like little pool section. And it was like closed off. And that sea lion did everything perfectly. Like, do, wave, wait, instantly. And then, like, speak. And he just goes... It's like, whoa, holy shit. <laughs> the video of the seal in the Arctic where it's like... I went to this sea lion exhibit and I I didn't remember. I had no fun. So I knew seals and sea lions sounded funny, but in that moment, I completely forgot. So when, <laughs> when they started speaking, you're like, oh, <laughs> I just looked at my mom and went, mom. And she's like, what? Like, I don't think I'm going to be able to take this. It's like, why? I forgot how fucking stupid seal sounds. <laughs> Look at him. Like, what is wrong? He can't do it. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Man, that sucked, but it was also hilarious. <laughs> All right. Next up. Dolphins. They had dolphins. Ah! So I got to see dolphins, which was pretty fucking sick. Bottlenose dolphins. Um, unfortunately, the clip I have here is not the show. Like, the show where they actually do, like, flips and jump around and play with the balls. Because that video is just too long, and I couldn't get it on my computer in time. So, I have the aftermath, where they were just put, like, in a little side section. You can just look over, and you can see them, like, swimming and chilling or whatever. But the super cool thing was that they had what they call a wolfen. And a wolfin is kind of like a liger. In the sense, like a liger is a tiger and a lion making a baby. A donkey is a horse and a mule having a baby. A tiger musky is a musky and a northern pike having a baby. And a wolfin is when a bottlenose dolphin and a false killer whale have a baby. That's what a wolfin is. Um... If you guys don't know what false killer whales are, yeah, so the false killer whale is not a whale, first of all. It's just called that. It's called a false killer whale because it looks like a killer whale, which themselves aren't dolph aren't whales either. The false killer whale and the killer whale are both dolphins, but they're called whales just because they're fucking huge. Um, false killer, take an orca whale and remove all the white spots on it and make it a lot smaller. Like, it's definitely much bigger than a bottlenose dolphin, but it is nowhere close to as massive as an orca whale. But they have more of that orca-shaped head where it's like a smooth head of a missile as opposed to like a bottlenose dolphin where they also have that like smooth missile head, but then like their beak points out. So this big wolfin just looked like a giant fucking bottlenose dolphin that had the super fat melon head. I don't know if that's what this was in this video, but it was there for sure. This was one dolphin and I think the wolfin? Or were these just two bottlenoses? I'm muting this one because I think I speak in this one. Or no, no, no. My mom speaks in this one. 
I don't care if I speak in it. I'm talking to you right now. <laughs> As in, she uses my name. And I'm like, okay, well, fuck. <laughs> but, no, I think these are just the bottlenoses. But we'll wait and see. They had a wolf in it, and it was big. Wait, wait. Um... No, I think that's just the dolphin. That big one. They goofed around for a bit. Yeah, those are two just dolphins. No, they didn't have the wolf in there. I could probably just look up a wolf in, though. Let me... Oops. There we go. Uh... Let me look up Wolfen. Um. Aha. Oops. There we go. That's a Wolfen. Open image. I'm not muted, am I? I was pressing a ton of buttons on accident. That is a Wolfen. You can tell because look at his head. Normally bottlenoses have, like I showed you before, that pointy... Where, where's a good shot of it? They have... Hold on, let me do something. I'm gonna do this. A bottlenose dolphin. Oh. A bottlenose dolphin has the melon right here, and then their beak. There's the melon, and then the beak goes past the melon, like significantly. Like it's melon and then beak. Meanwhile, come over here to Mr. Wolfen. Oh boy, Mr. Wolfen. You have the melon. It's right here. Well then, here's your beak. It's mostly melon and then like little chode of beak. And it's not that the beak's shorter or anything, it's just that the melon is significantly larger. And why is it significantly larger, you say? Because it's part false killer whale. And this is what a false killer whale's head looks like. Open... I don't want to go on Reddit! Oh my god, fine. Let me just... False killer whale. Wolfen. This thing has sex with a bottlenose dolphin, and it makes that, a wolfin. That's how it all works. So, yeah, that's a wolfin. Wolfin. Ligers and wolf See? Like I said, like a ligers. Or, here, look, a dolphin, and then but it's a dolphin and a wolfin false killer whale bottlenose dolphin wolfin this is what i saw this is the thing that was there it was specifically a bottlenose dolphin and a false killer whale breeding to make a wolfin which was pretty cool it was significantly larger than everything else at the show for sure maybe it was here hawaii wolfin Um, oh my god, I completely forgot. So this was one of the funniest things that my mom and I were making jokes of during the dolphin show. So there was a part where they were introducing each dolphin one at a time. Like, this one's, now we have our next dolphin. Her name is, bleh, this, or that name means to be like th this name means the goddess of thunder or whatever it's like everyone say hi and then she jumps around and it's like whoa 
And um, I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. I forgot what, it could have been the Wolfen. Wait a minute. I think this is the exact same one. Cake, I mean, I wasn't at Sea Life Park. I don't think so. I think it was Kekai Malu, though. Because Kekai Malu has been to many different places. Kekai Malu Wall thing. I think it was specifically Kekai Malu that I saw. I remember they had signs like, the only wall fin ever. And I'm like, okay, that's not true. But it could be the only captive one. Is this the wall fin I saw, the specific one? Where is it? Where is it living right now? Was I at Hawaii Sea Life Park? Let me look up Hawaii Sea Life Park. Hawaii Sea Life Park. Okay, this is where I was. Yeah. Okay, so I was... Okay, so this is the exact same wolfin that I saw. Keikai Malu. What does Keikai Malu mean? I can't remember if Keikai Malu was the one with... Okay, no. It was a different dolphin. But... <laughs> Anyways, the joke, uh, the thing that made us laugh was that, um, what was it? One of the dolphins came out. So they were saying all the names like, oh, this dolphin's name means the whatever. And then this one's like, this one means the goddess of thunder. And this dolphin's name means the peaceful sea. <laughs> and then one of them came out and think, this dolphin's name is bleh. His name in Hawaiian means to listen and obey. <laughs> and I looked at my mom and I'm like, what did they just say? <laughs> did they just say his name is to listen and obey? <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> and then we just going like, and then this dolphin's name is where his name means to steal from his parents and throw in captivity. <laughs> this dolphin's name means slave. Like, what the f Did they really name that dolphin to listen and obey? Like, what the fuck? That's not okay. This dolphin's name means to be caught in a net and thrown in a park. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe they just said that with such a wide smile on their face. They were so proud to announce <laughs> that dolphin's name. And I was like, um... <laughs> this dolphin means... Depressed! <laughs> this dolphin's name means to be horribly depressed and isolated. <laughs> and I was like, why did they name it that? Why did they name it... To listen and obey? <laughs> That's so fucked. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Let me get rid of the fucking false killer whale. Um, they do look like orcas though, don't they? Oh, look at this one. Blech. Look at him. That is a fat tongue. What the heck? It's got like a cliff. The tongue has like a cliff side that a tiny person could jump off of. They look like orcas, but if you got rid of all the white. Yeah, look at them. I, right? I mean, not exactly. Like, relative to its own body size. The false killer whale's mouth's a little bit bigger, but... The false killer whale's also just, like, naturally slimmer, too. So... Ooh, what's this picture? I wish this wasn't blurred. Something? Please? Please. Uh. Oh. Better. Nope. Blackfish size comparison. Blackfish dolphins. 
open image a new tab? No. Um, I want to find this. Okay, this will work. Falls killer whale. And then killer whale. So, like, I want to say a bottlenose dolphin's, like, I don't know, probably around the same size as a melon-headed whale. So, yeah, like I said, a false killer whale is significantly bigger than a bottlenose. But an orca is also significantly bigger than a false killer whale. So, it's like, okay. But, like, relative to itself, I mean, and just period... It is a much more streamlined animal compared to the orca, which is just a fucking tank. Like, look at that. It is... It's a bodybuilder. It's enormous. And then pilot whales, too, are crazy. Except they don't look... They are also hostile, though. My mom told me that pilot whales often harass people in the water. As in... They will grab people by their flippers when they're free diving. And just hold them to the bottom of the... This isn't even, like, in captivity. This is just out in the wild. Pilot whales will fuck with people that are just, like, swimming or whatever. They'll grab them by their flippers, pull them down to, like, the bottom of the water, and just sit there. And just watch the person, like, frantically try to, like, get air. And then, like, right at the last second... Then the pilot whale just lets go and lets the person swim up to the surface. Like, they know. They know exactly how much air you have left in your lungs. And they just sit there and they're like, yeah, you piece of shit. <laughs> and then they let go and then they let you get up to breathe. And as soon as you get that air, they're like, okay, round two, yoink. It's like, oh my fucking god. <laughs> That's, th they literally torture people. I wouldn't be surprised if wild orcas do that too, because wild, because captive orcas certainly do that, where they just hold their trainers at the bottom of the pool, and they're just like, I'm gonna fucking keep you down here. And then they know you're about to, like, die, so then they let go of you, and it's like, <gasps> oh my god, and they just yank you back down, and it's like, oh my god. <laughs> but apparently pilot whales do that in the wild all the time. So, if you see pilot whales... Get ready. <laughs> Anyways, let me do that. So, we're done with dolphins. We can finally get to the sharks. There were no hammerheads. I was sad. I wanted to see hammerheads. But what they did have, they had one sandbar shark, which just kind of looks like your average reef shark, but like a little brownish looking tannish brown instead of like the normal gray and then they have their dorsal fin the one on the back is like really big like not just tall but like wide too like it, it, it it's larger it looks like you put a reef shark in photoshop and then like rectangle selected the dorsal fin and then just stretched it outwards diagonally to be bigger I was like, oh, well, that's a big fin. So they had one sandbar shark, one black tip, which is like, come on, you all fucking know what a black tip looks like. It's, why don't I look these up too? Black tip, re... no, just black tip shark. Yeah, just like normal, plain, it's the vanilla shark. Just reef shark, black tips on it. Is there a difference between a black tip shark and a black tip reef shark? No, there is no difference. But yeah, they had one of these. One of these. Black tip shark. One black tip shark. They had a sandbar shark. Again, it just... Oh my. So it just looks like your average everyday shark. But like with a really big dorsal fin for some reason. So they had one black tip shark, one sandbar shark, and then seven white tip reef sharks. They had seven of these. And these, these are personal favorite for sure. I love these sharks. 
I may not have seen a hammerhead, but I got to see white tip reef sharks. I love white tip reef sharks because they were in all the documentaries I watched when I was growing up as a kid. They were in Blue Planet. They were in, they were in like two episodes of Blue Planet. They were in um, some documentary I saw called like Island of the Sharks. They were in Coco's Islands, like IMAX documentary. I love white tip reef sharks. And they're one of the special sharks because you know how everyone's like, sharks gotta keep swimming or else they'll stop breathing and they'll die. While that's true, the white tip reef shark is a special case where they don't have to do that. The white tip reef shark has the ability to just fucking sit on the ground and not move. It's like, what? Well, how is it dying? <clears throat> well, the way that they fix that is that their mouths are built different. They can just sit on the ground and then if you watch one, they're just constantly opening and closing their mouths. They're like, <coughs> and what they're doing is that they're literally sucking water into their mouth and then pushing it out of their gills. So they're constantly just like flowing fresh oxygen filled water through their gills so they don't have to swim. They can just fucking sit there and breathe, which is dope. They can just relax in like hordes like this too. They are hordes. They are horde sharks. They, they, they swim in hordes. So yeah, they had seven of them and they had a scheduled event, which was feeding time. So we got to watch them feed the sharks. We have a grand total of nine girls in here. They range on size. Okay, yeah, and they're all females, I guess. So by target feeding each shark, we're able to get They just have like a stick, and then they put like fish on the end of it, and then they drag them in the water, and then they make the sharks follow. It's like, oh, that's kind of cool. Yes, these are all the white tips reef sharks. There's a black tip and a sandbar shark that keep going right in front of the screen, too. But they had a lot of white tips. And I was like, oh man, this is actually kind of cool. It's like I said, I love white tips. I like how they look so unique. Like most sharks have the exact same design, but like with minor differences. They're like Haya toys. <laughs> or if they just take the Corporal Reef Shark build and it's like, oh. But this one has black tips on its fins. It's like, okay. And then there's the gray reef shark, which is just literally the fucking reef shark build, but gray. And it's like, oh, here's the Caribbean reef shark, which is even, which is like the exact same thing. <laughs> it's the, here's the silky shark. Okay, what's the difference? <laughs> the white tip reef shark looks different. It looks so, it has a unique silhouette and shape, especially with the face. They have that like flat box head that I really like and they're very elongated. I really like the white tip reef shark. So right now we have Caitlin, that's a small fish, squid, shrimp, herring, that's a larger fish. We also like to give them other food. I want shark figures. What do you mean don't tempt them? I would absolutely eat that shit up if Haya Toys made shark figures. <gasps> Ooh, hey, look, there's a sandbar shark. There he is. He had some injuries. Yeah, as you can see, like, the front of his dorsal fin's kind of injured. And his nose is, like, super battered. I'm guessing it's from, like, hitting the glass or whatever. Yeah, look at his nose. He is an injured shark. It's a sandbar. Ooh, my fingers. And I have to refocus. There we go, sharks. They're the coolest fucking animal alive right now. And I will not... Ooh, there's the black tip. Like I said, he always goes up to the screen! Yeah, I can't wait to talk about the stem day. stuff. Oh my god. I want articulated shark figures. Really badly. Like, not just... Hey, there's the black tip. 
but by keeping very accurate track of how much everyone's eating, we're able to consult our veterinarian we have here at the park. Yeah, so the guy with the stick questions. is like keeping track of every shark and making sure which one ate and which one wasn't. So we do have two fully grown white tip reef sharks in here. They're about six feet in length. Yeah, and like any time a shark that he already fed swims up, he's like, no, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I would kill... Oh, my God. If, like, Gashapon... What happened? Where's the... If, like, Gashapon... Or what's the line called? Diversity of life? If the diversity of life line made sharks... Oh, my God. I would buy every single one of those... That would be the coolest thing ever. That would be the coolest thing ever. Diversity of life. Sharks. You guys know what diversity of life is, right? Diversity of life figures. They're these. Most of them are gashapons because they're really tiny. But... They made a fucking Nile crocodile. Fully articulated Nile crocodile. Like, let's look at this thing. Look at him. It's literally the animal. They're SH Monster Arts animals. That's what these things are. I don't know what this currency is. <laughs> but I do know this thing was expensive, though. Oh, it's Singapore dollars. <laughs> Singapore dollar. I don't know how much a Singapore dollar is, but like, look at these things. Oh my goodness. Most of them are just like gashapons, though, because they're like bugs and like little tiny. Like, look at that. That's sick. They make crabs, too. Hold on. Diversity of life crab figure. These are the coolest ones. The bugs and the crustaceans. They made a coconut crab. $100, though, but, like, come on. Look at it. <laughs> that is straight up a fucking coconut crab. Fully articulated, just straight up the animal. The Gashapon ones aren't too expensive, I don't think. But, like, that's so cool. Oh, the frogs are really cool, too. Yeah, Diversity of Life has frogs. Let me find those ones. Diversity of Life frog figures. There are so many of these. Yeah, look, they have, like, whatever these are called. Like, the ones that are just, like, little boxes. Are they box frogs? I don't know what they're called. Like, look at that! Fully articulated tree frog? You can't say no to that. They even have swappable heads for the... Fat inflating necks. These are... Look at that! If this line made sharks, I would go ape shit. They make like mantis... These are so cool. I love this line. I don't have anything from them yet. But oh my lord, do I want stuff. Diversity of life geckos. Yeah, like, come on, look at that. Uh, those are leopard geckos. I think they're, yeah, leopard geckos. Like, look at this, this is so cool. They're perfect, they're monster arts animals. How can you say no to that? Diversity of life, what else do they make? They make all the cool animals. They don't make like, mice <laughs> or rabbits they make the cool animals diversity of life bugs oh that's right they make like stag beetles and stuff so speaking of having one with godzilla i see a lot of people use the diversity of life figures and they pose them with their kongs and then they're like giant skull island animals which is sick. Like, look, fucking stag beetle. Like, four variations of it. 
depending on like the species like they really go into this shit there's like four different versions based on four different species of stag beetle and yes they make prey mantises these are all diversity of life mantises oh and crickets this line rules there's a hercules beetle giant hornet there's a ladybug a bunch of ladybugs like come on they come with the wings too they seem to primarily just make critters like critters like bugs and tiny reptiles but then they just recently got to making a fucking nile crocodile so now it's like hey i want a shark now please give me a reef shark that i can like buy 15 of and then i can have a school a school of sharks are there any articulated shark figures okay that aren't 3d prints that that's not what i meant <laughs> i yeah king shark King Shark is an articulated shark figure. You got me there. Wait, which one is this? This isn't the Build-A-Figure one, is it? No, because that's the Build-A-Figure one. Whoa, what's this King Shark figure? Huh. That's cool. Oh. It's an expensive one, probably. <gasps> But yeah, diversity of life mantis figures. There are a lot of mantises. Like the rose mantis and the leaf mantis and the mantis mantis and the prey mantis and the master mantis. Yeah, and they're mostly gashapons because like I said, they're mostly just tiny critters. So you just get them in little gashapon balls. But then every once in a while, they make the super big one that's a premium Bandai figure, like the fucking Hercules Beetle. And yeah, they could be proxies for Comacurus. Oh, wait, that makes me think. Is there a spider? Oh, no way, they did make spiders. Not like tarantulas or anything, but they made spiders. They're cute ones, too. Look at them. Aw, whoa, what? Peacock spiders? That's a thing? Peacock spider. Whoa, that's sick. Oh my god, the, the spider just has a normal abdomen like that, this normal bug ass, and then it opens up like a peacock ass? No way. And it's so tiny. Why would it need to do that? It's so tiny. <laughs> That's so cool. Oh my god. That's awesome. This needs to be a Pokemon. Where's my Pokemon of this? This is so cool. I mean, wait a minute. Oh, wait, there is a Pokemon for this. Yeah, for Scarlet and Violet. I'm only saying that because I know that that specific spider Pokemon has a face that kind of looks like this, and he has a pair of arms that's always up in the air like this. But instead of, like, the peacock ass, it's, like, the web in the middle. Hold on, what is it called? Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Spider. Or I'm just being stupid, but I'm pretty sure it's this guy. Doesn't he always have his arms up in the air? Like, oh, look at my web. Peacock spider Pokemon. Oh, look at it. Aww. Volacnid. Oh my god, that's so cute. This needs to be a Pokemon. 
I, I'm saying it right now. They need a Peacock Spider Pokemon. What type would it be, though? What type would a Peacock Spider Pokemon be? Obviously Bug, but... I don't want it just to just be Bug Poison. That's boring. It needs to be something cool, like Bug Psychic, where it's like the mask. It's like a big, scary face, and like that mask can like hypnotize you or whatever. So it's like Bug Psychic or something like that. <gasps> That's right! They make turtles! Diversity of life makes turtles. Yeah, they make snapping turtles! Oh. And box tortoises. make turtles and no that's not a king crab figure oh wait is it spider crab what is it called yeah spider crab diversity of life spider crab I want this thing this thing looks fucking sweet the spider crab He's holding his own instructions. Look how big this thing is. It's eight inches long. This is so cool. But yeah, diversity of life needs to make sharks. I would demolish those. They just keep feeding these sharks. These sharks are about four to six feet in length, and that may seem a little big to you, but it is actually quite small. Oh, wait. This part's awesome. The part that she says. I hope you guys can hear this. Let me check. Okay, you can hear. Okay. These sharks are about four to six feet in length, and that may seem to you for these sharks are about four to six feet in length, and that may seem a little big to you, but it is actually quite small for these species of sharks. Just to put into perspective, this tank is about 18 feet deep, and a tiger shark can reach that length. These species Did you hear that? That is nuts! This entire tank? Like, from the surface of the water to the bottom of this exhibit, it's 18 feet deep. And looking at these sharks, these were some pretty big sharks. And I was like, oh, man. The, the depth of this pool is 18 feet total. And that is how long a tiger shark can get. A tiger shark, some random wild tiger shark out there from the tip of the nose to the tip of the tail is as long as this pool is deep. Like, that is... Holy shit, tiger sharks are so fucking big! Like, you just hear that an animal like, oh, this is a 20-foot animal. Like, okay, fucking whatever, who cares? You don't understand how big a 20-foot animal is. That is huge! Look at that! Just imagine some, like, tiger shark just, like, pointing its nose straight down. It would stretch the entire length of this pool. That's... Oh, my God. Just to put into perspective, this tank is about 18 feet deep. 18 feet deep? And that's how long a tiger shark can get. These species are on the side. Yeah, I can send you the playlist. A big question... Yes, is how can you tell the white apart? Ooh, so, yes, they are my favorite animal in the world. The I'm gonna have to reheat my food. And I'm supposed to be eating it, but I'm talking too much. Because I'm so excited to tell you guys about everything. Man, and we're only on the animals, and we're halfway through the stream already. It's almost like a birthmark, and it's helped us come apart each individual animal. That was the sandbar. There's the black tip. Thing in white tip research having those spots. 
The hammerhead in here must have like died or been relocated or something. Which sucks, because I really wanted to see the hammerhead. It had to have been a scalloped. Great hammer... So I know it wasn't a smooth hammerhead, because they look way too distinct. Not only are their heads really big compared to their own bodies, like they're really fat hammerheads. But then their body, like their torso, is so damn skinny. It had to have been a scalloped hammerhead, because that's like a average size for a shark. And then it has like the rigid bumps on its nose. The great hammerhead is what most people think of when they think of a hammerhead. But those things are fucking huge. Those are like, I'm the size of a tiger shark. That Those are also, I can be 18 feet. So, it had to have been a scalloped hammerhead. Because I would have known if it was a smooth hammerhead. And it just can't be a great hammerhead. And it sure wasn't a bonnet head either. So they had to have had scalloped hammerheads in here. What's next? Is it food next? Yes! Food! Uh, yeah, Godzilla does not have a stomach. But Malasadas can fix that. So, you can't go to Hawaii and not have Malasadas. It's... They're in Pokemon for a reason. Pokemon got, um... Got Hawaii down. Perfect. I think so. The Alola region, like I said, fucking mongooses. The fact that every character in Sun and Moon devours malasadas like nobody's business like that's accurate malasadas are the shit in hawaii now what is a malasada i don't know but to summarize how it tastes it's like a fried donut but better in every single way it's just a big massive warm bread like pastry and then they have like powdered sugar or whatever you want on it or like cinnamon. And then sometimes they're, they're they're filled with like creams or whatever. I got a chocolate one that was like filled with chocolate, but then I ate it and I was like, Ugh, I don't know. And it wasn't the malasada's fault, it was the chocolate's fault. Because I was expecting like, kind of like chocolate frosting or like chocolate cream or what. But it was like chocolate pudding. So I was like, Ugh, I don't know if this, this, this jives with me well. So I just kept getting normal malasadas from that point on and oh my god they were so good look at that that is delicious hey look my water bottle you can see goku's on it look, goku's on my water bottle rest in peace akira toriyama i cried when i found that out that was the day right before so okay um so the way i got to hawaii was first time in my college dorm right and i have to pack all my stuff in my suitcase then at like 3 in the morning, I have to take a train back to my hometown. And then when I'm at my hometown, I arrive there at like 9 in the morning or whatever. Then I just chill there. And then I head to the airport from there and then I get to Hawaii. So we go, we rewind back to that night where I'm still in my dorm. Just waiting for the train. It's like a few hours away. And I'm still packing everything. And then I get the notification that Akira Toriyama just passed away. Oh my lord. If I didn't have to keep packing and head to the train station, I would have just... Like, say that wasn't the night I had to go to Hawaii. And I'm just like, okay, I'm just gonna go to bed and then, like, I don't know, more school tomorrow. I would have cried that whole night if I could. That was so sad. That Akira Toriyama passed away just out of nowhere. That, that that broke my heart. But, again, like I said, I had to get on the train and stuff. So I'm like, okay, I can only cry for so long. I got to get on this fucking train. <laughs> so then I get packing or whatever. And then you think like, oh, well, how about when you were on the train or on the plane? I was too tired. I was so tired. <laughs> but I didn't want to go to sleep either. Because I didn't want to miss anything important. And now that I'm talking about being tired, now I'm yawning. So. <laughs> but anyways. Malasadas. Holy smokes. They are so good. This was one of my favorite foods I had there in Hawaii. So I don't have any pictures of it. But it's on the thumbnail for this stream. Spam Musubi. I had so much Spam Musubi in Hawaii. For those of you that don't know 
what spam musubi is. It's a slice of spam. Like we all know what spam is. That stuff's delicious. If any of you guys say, ooh, it's canned meat, shut up. You cook it, of course. Yeah, I don't like my canned meat. Eh, pork in a can, that's gross. I w you cook it! <laughs> you guys act like you've never eaten a canned food before. Yeah, but it's canned meat. Corned beef exists. It's perfectly fine. If anything, that's awesome that we can preserve meat like that and it still tastes amazing. So anyways, Spam Musubi, it's super simple. It's a slice of Spam with a bunch of rice underneath it and then wrapped in seaweed. It's as simple as that. It's like those stereotypical like little sushis you see in like cartoons and shows or whatever and manga in it where it's just like a little strip of rice and then like a little strip of sushi on that and then like a little thing of seaweed around it. Imagine that, but upscaled to be the size of a slice of Spam. And sometimes it's just like the seaweed in the middle and other times it's enough seaweed to cover the entire thing. I like the ones where it covers the entire thing because that means more seaweed. But I went to this sushi restaurant with my grandma who lives here. They had Tamago Spam Roll Tempura. So what this is, it's essentially a Spam Roll. It's a Spam Musubi, so it's the Spam, the rice, and the seaweed. But there's also Tamago. For those of you that are not well-versed in the Japanese language, Tamago is egg. It's essentially omelet. It's a specific way to make egg. Like, there's scrambled egg, over easy. Tamago is, it's kind of like making an omelet, except a lot more spongy. You'll see it better in the next picture, because the next picture has Tamago. But, yeah, so it's... Spam and tamago wrapped in seaweed and then rice. And then they just throw that shit in the deep fryer. Because that's what tempura is. Like if you guys have seen shrimp tempura. Like the emoji on your iPhone. If you look up shrimp. It's like the shrimp and it's like all brown and crispy. It's a That's a fried shrimp. Shrimp tempura. Tempura batter. Fried. They just fucking tempura fried. Spam musubi. And oh my god. This was the greatest thing ever. <laughs> Now the next slide I'm gonna show you is really cool. I got McDonald's one morning. I got McDonald's breakfast in Hawaii. It is not like McDonald's breakfast in the rest of intercontinental America. We all know that like depending on which regions you go, McDonald's usually has different items. Like they usually have the main stuff like the Big Mac and whatever. But a lot of their other menu items are different. Kind of like how Korea has a bunch of like awesome McFlurry flavors that we just don't have here in America. Hawaii's McDonald's is really different. I, my grandma got me the breakfast platter. And as we know here in intercontinental America, the breakfast platter has pancakes, or as they call them, hotcakes, has scrambled eggs, turkey sausage and a biscuit i think that's it is that right is that the mcdonald's breakfast platter it's pancakes turkey sausage a biscuit and scrambled eggs is there something i'm missing oh the hash brown that's right the hash brown circle here in hawaii this is what it was it was rice. It was rice for breakfast. I had rice. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Almost every single day in Hawaii. It had rice. Tamago. I took a bite out of it. Tamago. So this is what I mean. It's not just like scrambled egg. or like It's kind of like omelet, but it's like spongier. It's like super fluffy omelet. That's what tamago is. So it comes rice, tamago, Spam and Portuguese sausage, which is nuts. I opened that up. So I already knew that McDonald's breakfast in Hawaii came with spam and rice because, like, it's not like I never talked to my family from Hawaii. Like, they called me in and, like, hey, did you know that McDonald's breakfasts have spam and rice? And I'm like, whoa, no way, that's awesome. I want spam in my breakfast. 
every time I go to McDonald's. Like, <laughs> then I actually got to experience it. I'm like, whoa, this is awesome. I'm like, whoa, what's this? And she's like, oh, that's Portuguese sausage. I'm like, oh, this is so good. I'm like, we have sausage in our McDonald's. It's just not Portuguese sausage. And then the Tabago. Ooh, that was so good. And then I drizzled ketchup on it. And then I put soy sauce in the rice, which I think was a bad idea, because you don't soy sauce your sticky rice. Well, I... <laughs> I still tried it, though. It wasn't the worst, but I don't know if you're supposed to soy sauce your sticky rice. What's next? <gasps> ah! Okay, so this is the last thing I did. I had so much food in Hawaii, but this is one of the things I took a picture of. I think this was my last meal in Hawaii? I think so. So we went out to this restaurant. Not much of the stuff on the menu looked that appealing to me, to be honest. But my uncle, so my mom was there and she was like talking to my uncle, so her brother. I was like, hey, help him find something that he might like. He's like, hmm. You either want the Kahlua pig nachos or the Kahlua pig quesadillas. And we still got the Kahlua pig nachos anyways. Like just as an appetizer for all of us to eat. Which was awesome. So instead of like tortilla chips or like corn chips, they were taro chips. They were made from taro. So they were like blue, they looked, they were kind of like blue potato chips. Blue sweet potato chips. Covered in Kahlua pig, which is sort of like pulled pork, but like if a Hawaiian did it and it was better in every way, shape, and form. Kahlua pig is so fucking good. <laughs> I, I'm Hawaiian Jesus, the last supper. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, it has that. It had cheese. Can't remember what kind of cheese. And then it had, it had lomi salmon. Lomi salmon. It's like salsa. It's like salsa that you put on chips. But instead of being made with tomato, they use salmon meat. And that's also what you see here in this picture. I got Kahlua, I got Kahlua pig tor quesadillas. So there was cheese in them, of course. There's Kahlua pig in them. The whole reason the tortillas look blue is because the tortillas were also made from taro. Sort of like those chips from the Kahlua pig nachos the tortillas were made out of taro too so they were blue which was cool and like that that salsa stuff on top garnished in loamy salmon that's what that i don't remember what that dark purple stuff on the top was it was crispy i think it was just like i don't know more taro or something i don't know but holy smokes this was delicious i think that's it for food is next the figure store i went to Yes! Okay, so, now more personal me stuff, like just, oh, Sacred Eyes is a figure collector. We went to this massive figure store, this big anime collectible store. My grandma was like, listen, Psychronize, my grandson. I have saved up so much money for this trip. Get literally whatever the hell you want. Within reason. Like, I'm not going to get the $2,000 statue. Like, that's fucking dumb. <laughs> but I just looked around. They had so much stuff here. I think the only... There's, like, maybe three things I regret not grabbing. But outside of that, I pretty much got all the things I wanted. So this was, like, their Figma section. They had all these. These are great. Oh, they had Tomy Tech furniture. Oh, shit. I would have grabbed that. They're school desks. How much are those? No, I want to look it up here. Well, okay. I don't want my Amazon account's name to pop up, so. Holy shit, it's only $20! For furniture! For school desks, only $20. How many chairs does it come with, though? How many chairs and desks does it come with? Oh, 
Wait, how many does it come with? I can't tell. Set contains desktop or th Holy shit, it comes with three of them. It comes with three desks, three seats, and three backrests. <laughs> Hold on. Storage space on desk, front of teacher's desk, desk legs. Okay, I don't fucking need to know every single individual part of the chair. I just need to know how many chairs it comes with. Okay, I think this is what it comes with. I think it comes with two tape. I think it comes with two desks, two chairs, and then a teacher stand. Oh my god, I want that. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's gotta be what it is, right? Like, look at the picture. Two desks, and then a table. What are these other things then? What are these wacky stands? Huh. Anyways. Oh, there's... Oh, these are all weapons? <laughs> Man, I did not look hard enough when I was here. <laughs> but, anyways. I bought these two. I bought... I got Flare and Noelle. I already have Ruchia, but I wanted those two. So now I have all of Gen 3. She was just like, get whatever you want. And I saw those two, and I'm like, okay, I want those two. Um, I think I did regret not getting Kaguya and Chica. But I also just felt... I know I saw them, and I was like, I don't know. Because I'm like, oh, I don't want to make them get too much stuff for me. I was being humble, guys. <laughs> But it's cool because I like how their dresses are actually, like, made of cloth. They aren't, like, hard plastic. That's why I think those two figures are really cool. Um, this is just some random stuff I took pictures of. I don't play Genshin. But this section looked cool. Pop-up figures! I pull alive. There's Gora. They have pop-up figures of Spy Fam. They had so much shit here. I didn't even know these existed. Wait, isn't he supposed to have a gun? Oh, there's the gun. Why is it removable? Why would you ever pose him without the gun when his hand is stuck like that? Same with her. Well, okay, hers is, I can get. She could just be fixing her glove and you don't want her to be holding the knife. But why would you ever not want him holding that gun? This was, They had Godzilla stuff. Ooh. I think these are Gashapons. These ones, at least. I don't for a fact. These are... Well, I don't know for a fact. I don't know what these are. Destroya being $90 was kind of crazy, but... Everything else I saw kind of reasonable. Like, military vehicles, 20 bucks for three tanks and a Super X3. That's kind of neat. I probably could have got those. I didn't want to. Same with these. Didn't really want to get them. If there were more of them, I would have got them. And I could get, like, a whole swarm. But it was just those two, so I didn't really care. Um... Guys, they had so much stuff here. Like, look at all of this. They had Pokemon cards. Some giant fucking robot dinosaur that with military guns. Common Rider stuff. Cards. Little mini blind bags and boxes. Oh, my lord. Oh, yeah. I went to a fucking grocery store. And at the checkout, they had Pokemon cards. And a booster pack was only like $4. I was like, what? Only $4 for a booster pack? I thought they were supposed to be like $8. This definitely isn't a monster arts bootleg. This thing in person was like, I don't know, four or five inches tall. Like it was not big. This thing is small, really small. And it, it definitely could not move at all. It can't articulate. It's just, a cute thing that just is there. <laughs> Here's a bunch of model kits. I gotta stop covering my mouth with my hand. Like, I, there's a microphone that needs to pick up my voice. <laughs> Please, do not touch. Thank you. Yeah, so here's all the figurizes of all the characters that aren't Gundams, essentially. Kamen Rider. Bub the Leipdeer. Golk. Metal Gigu. All that. 
more model kits and model kit equipment. They had a whole Warhammer section. I don't know why I didn't take pictures. They had a bunch of like Warhammer box sets and stuff like that. And they had a whole massive like wall of just Warhammer stuff. Like tons and tons of different paints and brushes and all that stuff. Again, another thing I probably should have asked to get stuff from, but I didn't. But here's like model kits of AT-ATs, Boba Fett, Mando, all that. Cool stuff up here. <laughs> more giant robots and more model kit shit. Like clippers and whatever the hell that is. Do not enter. Staff only. All this cool stuff. All these real grade model kits. Ooh, Zaku 2. All these. More Gundams, more robots, anime ladies. I got something from this section. I must have taken this picture after I got it, because it's not here anymore. Godzilla stuff. That's right. There was a big 54 statue in the window. That looked really nice. They had a Monster Arts Godzilla 91, which I would have probably grabbed right then and there if I didn't already have 89, so, like, I didn't need it. But it's cool that it was there. It wasn't an easy no. Like, I looked at it for a bit, and I'm like, mm, do I really want that? And I'm like, nah, I'm fine. I don't need Godzilla 91. He's neat, but he's not a necessity. Some more stuff they had. They had X plus. Yeah, they had a ton of Nendoroids, too. They had, all the they had a whole Nendoroid wall. But they have, like, the X plus for 91. The Sakai Godzilla 2000. The one with the gray spikes. And then this huge fucking Ghidorah X+. Plus. Like, holy smokes, this thing was big. This is the stuff I was talking about, where I'm like, okay. Oh, you can get whatever you want, Psychronized. I'm like, okay, well, probably don't mean that. So, <laughs> so yeah, no to that. There's another Ghidorah statue, except this one looked significantly more ugly. Like, look at his faces. And this one's not as big either. I think next is... Yeah, so this is the stuff I walked out of the store with. We went here twice. This is what I got the first time. I got Amazing Yamaguchi Oromite and the Sofix minus one. My first real statue. I remember everyone in the, the collectible server that I'm in going absolutely apeshit over this statue and all of them going oh man they're sold out i can't find them anymore and like oh i uh, man i can't find them for good prices anymore man. like apparently everyone really fucking loves this thing and then i saw it there and i'm like yeah it's not too big and it does look really nice maybe i could get this one it's a neat it's a really good looking statue and apparently everyone loves it so i got it along with All Might. Second time we went there, I walked out with these four items. I walked out with, like I said, I got Flare and Noel. Um, this is what I got from the Warhammer section. The Tyranid data sheet cards. It's just the stats of all the different units. And then a model kit for Shar Zaku, because I have the Gundam. I have RX-78 too. I have a bunch of the green Zakus, just like the normal Zakus from the G-Frames. But I don't have Shar Zaku, so I saw that model kit for him, and I'm like, oh, cool, I'll just get that, I guess. And, okay, that's all I have for pictures for the Hawaii trip. My trip in Hawaii was sick, and epic, and based, and all those words. Whew. That was an awesome time. There were some things I did. Oh, wait, what was the... No, there was a thing. Hold on. Where was it? Do I have it here? No, I forgot to bring the picture. Hold on. It's like the best picture. I'll, I'll get it. Give me a second. Because it has another thing that I regretted not getting. Yeah, this picture. 
Let me get that. Let me turn this off for a second. Photos. Right here. So this was the, I guess, Tamashi section with like figure arts and monster arts. Like, look, they have Blue Eyes White Dragon and Griffith or whatever. You know, Dragon Ball Z stuff. I thought, I wish they had first formed Frieza still. Because I remember one time, I wasn't here in Hawaii, but then they just sent me a video like, whoa, look at this store that we found. And they had a first form Frieza in stock. And I was like, oh, no way, I want that. But, um, the things I regret not getting were some of these things down here. I would have got some of these. I would have got, um, well, I don't know about those. Those are too small. But, like, these, the Sega Genesis, I would have got that. Or, like, this PS4. Or the PS, yeah, like, the PS4 with the controllers and stuff. That would have been so funny. To, like, get Goku and then just put, like, the PSVR on his head and give them the controller like <laughs> they were so cute and like little tiny thingies and i was like oh i would have got those like just have my figure sitting down playing on a sega genesis or like the playstation that like that's hilarious but yeah man i really need to look into those tomy techs because those were super cheap for like full ass furniture oh heck yes Man, we only have like 15 minutes. Um. Now what? <laughs> oh yeah, the MMSs. That MMS. The car. The Godzilla before it. Okay, so. Okay, so Nendoroid Jaws. I'll just start with that. Nendoroid Jaws. That thing is adorable, and I want to get it. It's hilarious because it was revealed as soon as Gura's Figma, or no, Gura's Nendoroid was announced for a reissue. So, like, Gura's Nendoroid, and now the Jaws Nendoroid. And it's like, okay, well, that's fucking perfect. But, um, is next Kiara? Yes, Kiara! Fake my Kiara! I know most of you guys don't care because you guys are just Godzilla fans, and, like, that's kind of it. But, <laughs> oh my god, I am a huge whole alive English fan. And Kiara is coming out, and I am stoked for that. She is... I'd say that the release order for all the Gen 1 characters are probably in my order of favorite to least favorite. And then I remembered that Callie was first. And I'm like, oh, wait, that's not true. Callie's one of the my favorites of those five for sure. But she's definitely not number one. Gura's number one. I think Kiara's number two. Then it's Callie. Then I think... You know, then Ame, or it's Ame, I don't know. It's close enough to my order of favoritism. So I'm getting all my favorites first, which is awesome. But with those MMSs, the Godzilla Evolved one, I am baffled at how much I like it. No, there's no Crony. So Crony is Gen 2. She is Whole Alive English Gen 2, which they haven't made figures of yet. I say yet, because they probably will eventually. Like, Fauna's in that gen. They're definitely going to make Figmas of Gen 2. But they're making Gen... So, they made all of JP Gen 3. Which is... Pekora. Or Pekora. Marin. Flair Noel. And... Rushia. They made all of JP Gen 3. Then they announced that they were doing all of Whole Alive English Gen 1. Callie's out. Gura's for pre-order. And she comes out sometime this year. And then Kiara comes out this year too, but like much later. We know we have the prototype for Ina, but it's not colored. And we just haven't seen anything from Watson yet. So that's English Gen 1. Now... They're also doing JP Gen 6, which is Chloe, Laplace, Louie, Iroha, and Koyori. Um, none of them are out yet, but Laplace is for pre-order, so all of her stuff's there. Ch 
Chloe has a colored prototype, which I just recently saw, and it looks fucking amazing. I really want to get the Chloe one, but at the same time, then it's going to make me want to just get the rest of the five. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. But Chloe is one of my favorite designs for one of the whole alive characters. So I, I, I don't know. But I'm hoping for more EN gents to get the Figma thumbs up. Because Gen 2, Hololive Council, and then Advent? Holy shit. If Advent gets Figma sooner than later, I'm going to lose my shit. They are all awesome. <laughs> but, um, what was the thing I was talking about? MMS. Oh, yeah. MMS um, Godzilla Evolved. I'm so baffled with that figure because it's inaccurate, but in a good way. Look at that thing. So... <laughs> It's got the pink spikes, and the spikes are the right shape and everything. It's got all the extra spikes on them, and, like, the thagmires and the elbow spikes. But they gave him his stomach back. Not completely. It's still smaller than the one on, like, the MMS for Godzilla 2019. It is still definitely a shrinked stomach. But it's not as bad as the actual movie design. It looks better than the actual movie. Which is so funny to me. <laughs> And then Kong is just Kong or whatever. It looks just as weird as the one we got for GBK. But that's so funny. How they made the movie monster series look better. Proportionately. Like significantly. <laughs> and then yeah, as you saw, there's the Haya toy reveals. That was a Shimo. That was Haya toy Shimo. That thing's going to be big. And I want that thing. It's going to be cool. That MG21 was gross. Well, let me find it. MMS Mecha Godzilla 2021. At least I thought it was. Apparently it wasn't that bad. But then again, mine was a bootleg. But the bootleg wasn't that far off from the official product. Maybe its proportions are better. Wait a minute. Um, I need a good picture. So here's the monster arts, and here's the MMS. Uh... <laughs> Figma Shiori. Oh my god, Figma Fuamoko. <laughs> Figma Fuamoko. Figma Fuamoko would... I think I would have a heart attack if I missed the pre-orders for that. <laughs> Figma Fuamoko? Oh my lord. <laughs> Those two are gonna be the butt of every single joke I do with my figures on like Instagram posts or like skits or everything. Fuwawa and Mokoko are the two funniest organisms I know of. Wait a minute, let me, yeah, Kong slashes. MMS Kong 2024. Because I'm pretty sure... Oh, it's from an Instagram post? Well, I'm definitely not seeing it then. Because Instagram doesn't load on my computer for some reason. MMS GXK Kong. So he has this main slash that he just already had prior. I know Godzilla, Godzilla slashes him three times. So he already had one scar on his chest from just since Kong Skull Island, I'm pretty sure. Just one on his chest. But then the attacks Godzilla does to him from Hong Kong, I know he hits him three times. He goes whoosh, 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 and then steps on him. So one, two, that's a lot of fingers. 
One, two. I can see it. They'll do Shimo. I think Movie Monster Series is probably going to do Scar King and Shimo for sure. Monster Arts, I was a bit skeptical on them. Like, oh, they might not do Scar King and Shimo because they didn't do the Mudos. But then they put Scar King on their list of like, hey, we're going to do this. So now it makes me think that we're getting both. I think Monster Arts is going to make a Scar King and a Shimo. For sure. Um, Haya Toys is obviously going to make them. That They literally just showed us their Shimo. Then we're going to get a Scar King. I'll probably get the Monster Arts Scar King. And then Haya Shimo. Because I want my Scar King to scale with my Kong. And my Kong is a Monster Arts. And then Haya Shimo to scale with my Godzilla. Which is a Haya. So... Yeah. GXK came out. I heard it was something. <laughs> if you're like most of the people that were excited for this movie, then your only real reason for being excited was Big Monster Boom Crash Slam Pow. And supposedly, that movie delivered in that front. It has some really good Boom sma Smash Slam Pow in that movie. So you get that. But thankfully, what I've also heard is that the story works. I'm not going to call it great. It's probably not good either. But it works. In the way that it didn't in GBK. In the sense that they went, we want as little story as possible because we just want to get to the monster stuff right away. The problem was that the story that they did give us needed a lot of human scenes which they took out of the movie so then that few human story stuff that we did get in gbk was just fucking stupid it was pathetic it was like why the hell are we doing this in gxk they started right off they they knew that they did they had to make a story they had to make a story that would work that could also be accomplished in as few scenes as possible they needed a story that would work while at the same time having as little human interaction as possible i mean unlike gvk where they just went we need a basic story and then they just put a bunch of monsters in as much as they could and then it's like okay well now this story's stupid this time the story actually is revolved around the monsters from what I've been hearing and seeing. Because I look at all the leaks because I don't care. It looks like it knows what it's doing and that it knew what it was supposed to do from the very beginning. It played all of its cards right. That's what I've been seeing. Like the story is pretty lackluster in the movie. But at the same time... It's better in the sense that it did its own job right. They didn't go, we need a small human story. And then the story that they put in the movie was one that needed to be big, to be good. And it's like, okay, well, what the hell? And this one, apparently, it's a simple story that was accomplished with the few scenes that it has. And it's like, okay, cool. Yeah, exactly. There were like three hours. They made a story for GVK that needed a lot of human interaction to work. And then they took all of it out. So then the story we were left with in that movie was stupid. It was pathetic. And it's like... <sighs> Meanwhile, in this movie, there's not going to be three hours of human stuff that they cut out. This is just the full thing. You're getting the whole story. While at the same time having it be brief so i it's gonna work better that's how i think gxk is performing i haven't even seen the whole movie i've just seen a bunch of like spoiled like leaks and clips and i already think it's better than gbk for sure i think gbk is easily the worst monsterverse movie like yeah the, the tasman sea fight was cool and the hong kong fight was cool until mecha godzilla showed up but that's it <laughs> I really do not like the rest of that movie. 
This movie is like... It's, it's better. It's better GVK. GVK stinks. <laughs> the Articulation series said that this was his favorite MonsterVerse movie. If that's something to go by. He was at the premiere though, so that could have influenced it. Like, it doesn't matter how pissy and angry you are about this movie existing. Like, oh, this is gonna be the worst movie ever. If you go to that premiere, you're gonna think it's the coolest fucking thing that's ever existed. Because you're spending an entire day with the people that made the movie, signs and pictures and lights and sound everywhere, completely hyping the shit out of the movie. Giant theater, big enough. Like, you're gonna love the movie. Like, come on. <laughs> that That's the ultimate get in the mood moment. Like, you can't possibly hate the movie after all of that hype. That could have played a factor into it. But nonetheless, Taz still said it was his favorite MonsterVerse movie. And Taz is someone I know in this community that actually has a brain. So I can take that as some pretty good consideration. Like, hey, if you liked this movie, it can't be that bad. I still don't like Mechagodzilla's design. I don't like it. I don't hate it as much as I used to, but don't get me wrong, I still hate it. I still don't like it. It's just not as harsh of a feeling as it was before. I still don't like the design. I still significantly like every single other Mechagodzilla design more than the one from GVK. I will honest to god take the anime trilogy design over the Monsterverse one. I liked the trilogy one. I, I, I did. I didn't love it. Not even close. I'd rate it like maybe a C minus. But I liked it. But yeah, I don't like the MonsterVerse one. I don't like Mechagodzilla. But his fighting style, I know. I get it. His fighting style rules. That was sick. How he punches and stuff instead of shoots missiles all the time and lasers. He primarily punches and stuff. He didn't have to specifically have that one design in order to fight like that. He could have looked better and fought the exact same way. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but yeah, I, I love every single other Mechagodzilla design significantly more. But, again, I heard GVK, or I mean GXK, does what it sought out to do. And I think it's good. I think it might be good. Not like, objectively good, like no. <laughs> it's gonna be a bad movie. But, I think it's gonna be fun. And no, not in a dumb... F I, that's one of my least favorite... I think... That's a pet peeve of mine. Psychronized pet peeve. Dumb fun. I hate that term. I hate... I, no. I hate the term dumb fun when it's being viewed positively. Like, yeah, this movie's gonna suck. It's gonna be dumb. But it's gonna be dumb fun. And like... You're just making yourself sound like an idiot when you say this movie is going to be stupid, but I want to watch it because I want to watch a stupid movie. I, You're just insulting your movie and saying that you have horrible standards. I don't like the term dumb fun, especially when it's used positively. Yeah, it's dumb fun, but it's our because Godzilla's... No, can it just be fun fun? I don't want it to be dumb fun. And from what I've seen, it's not... There's dumb fun moments, for sure. But I don't want dumb fun. I don't like those parts. But thankfully, that's not the majority of it. The majority of it just looks like fun fun. It's unironic, cool, action fun. And not, whoa, Godzilla's swinging his penis around and shooting a laser from it. Man, that's awesome because it's dumb, but it's fun. No, like, it's just unironic cool action fighting most of the time there are some parts where it's like okay what the hell's happening but for the most part the movie looks like it's just cool 
So that's good. That's good. I'm still not watching it opening night. But... <laughs> I'll watch it when I can. Because I'm still super busy with college. And I have to do that commission. And I gotta do all this stuff. So... Yeah, there's all that. Um... Man, there's something else I was gonna say. Yeah, I, I can't remember. Anyways, it's our time. It's been two hours. I gotta do stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about Evolved. I The design's grown on me, except the stomach. I can get over the pink. Like, I got over that. The pink looks fine. The extra spikes on, like, his face and stuff. I thought that was cool to begin with. Like, the extra spikes on his face. The elbow spikes, I think, are kind of extra. It's like a DeviantArt OC. Like, okay, cool. You guys added elbow spikes. So did every single other eight-year-old whenever they drew their own fan-made monster. The Thagomizers, I don't think were a good idea. But, like, they're there. They're not too insulting. The stomach is the worst part. I fucking hate that. I still do. Like, look at him. That's so gross. Why is he built like that? Why is he built like that? That's stupid. And no, he didn't bulk up. Everyone says, whoa, look at he worked out. Now his chest is huge. If you take both designs, Doe Goji and Winger Goji, I guess is what people call this. His body build is the exact same size. His chest, his chest is not any bigger than it was from the last design. His arms are not any beefier. His legs are a little bit longer, for sure, but they're still just as girthy. They're just slightly elongated. I think the tail's a little thinner, but the chest is the exact same size. It hasn't shrunk. It hasn't gotten wider. It didn't get any larger. He didn't bulk it up. It's the exact same size. It's just the stomach is gone. So it looks like he's super buff. He, he only lost weight. He didn't gain anything, visually. He gained nothing. So, yeah, I don't know. That's why I love the MMS, because it did it right. <laughs> he still has his stomach. I'm all for slimming him down. Like, okay, make him a little bit slimmer. This looks great for that. This His legs are definitely a little longer. The tail's slightly slimmer. And he has a bit of a stomach on. But it's not that bad. This is a healthy proportion. This is anatomically proper. This isn't normal. <laughs> it is the one... It... Yes, it's one issue. But it is one issue that is significant. It's like if every single design change was like a point, but no, they aren't all one point. Each change has its own worth of points, like elbow spikes are worth 10 points. If you don't like them, that's minus 10 points. Or like the Thagomizers, those are 15 points. If you like them, that just added 15 points to you liking the design. Or if you don't like them, that's minus 15 points. Do you like the design? The stomach is worth like 200 points. That is a gross change. And it's subtracted like 200 points from me liking the design. It's just one change. But that one change is so drastic. Like, ugh. Anyways. I just said it and then I got distracted. I gotta go. <laughs> It's time. I I have to leave. I know. I, I love all of you. I know. I know you don't want me to go. I'm sorry. I'll be back next week. I hope. I promise. I'll try to be here next week. We will... What will we do? Maybe we do something special like a tier list. Yeah, you know what? Fuck it. I'm not animating or monster huntering next week. We're going to do a fucking tier list. I'll do a vote to see what we do the tier list on. But we're going to do a fucking tier list next week because I feel like it. But yeah, I'm going to see you guys all next week. I hope you like my Hawaii aesthetic. I think I'm going to keep this for next stream just because I worked too hard on it. I like these bright, pretty colors and the 
hibiscus flowers. I like this. I'm going to keep this for a bit. Before going back, or maybe just getting a new theme that isn't as dark. Maybe when that moves. Ooh, that'd be cool. Anyways, yeah, I will keep up to date with you guys. I'm always active on Discord. I'm active on Instagram. I wish I was more active on YouTube, but, like, you guys know. <laughs> and uh, you're always free to donate on my Ko-Fi. Every single cent helps me out significantly. Makes things so much easier for me. So if you guys can do that, that'd be much appreciated, too. But anyways... I'll see you guys all next week, and I hope you all take care. Good night, everybody. Mwah.